name is Rebecca. I am a full-time artist and illustrator. I run a weekly art booth with my art business, selling lots of paper products, including art prints, greeting cards, stationery, books, journals, and notepads. And I'm going to show you today how I make to-do list notepads that I sell with my business. These are basically what my notepads look like. Sorry for the crinkly noise. They are in plastic sleeves right now because when I sell them in person, I have to put them in packaging to keep them protected. But uh, this is what some of my collection look like. And today I'm gonna to show you how I make these. Now I do have another design video that is about how to make notepads in general. And that is mostly focused on how to do the glue binding, which I will also show you in this video. But I got a lot of questions from that one that I wanted to answer here. And I also didn't show how I do the design process, which I use Canva and then my illustrations to combine to make the design. So I'm gonna do like a little design tutorial as well as manufacture these in this video and show you just a couple things that are different for the different shape. And that'll be my tutorial today. Now these are a really fun product to make. You can sell them at whatever price point you like. And it's a really good way to complement other products that you might already have. For example, if you have an art print that is really successful, if you can take a certain element out of it, like a character or um, some sort of small scene, then you can put that on a notepad and it just adds to your collection of things you can sell. The great thing about these notepads is also you don't really need a lot of specialist materials to make them at home. I will show you what I use and I'll link any products I use in the description as well. But if you're just making these for fun, you can probably just find the things around your house that you want to use to make a notepad. And if you're making a big batch to sell, there's just a few inexpensive things I recommend to make them even nicer as products. So first, we're going to hop into a screen share on my computer to show you Canva and how I design them. Then I'm going to print them and then we'll manufacture the notepad. I'll give you some tips on that and we'll have a really cute product by the end. That sounds pretty good, right? Okay, good. I'm excited. Let's make something cute. Okay, I've opened up Canva and this is where we're gonna be designing our notepad today. So the canvas is 11 inches by eight and a half inches. This is the size of my printer's paper that I'm going to be using. If you are in a different country and you use like A4 uh, paper, you will wanna size your Canva screen to whatever size you're printing on. But in, the, in Canada and the US, the standard printer paper size is eight and a half inches by 11. And I've made that horizontal here because I'm gonna be putting three of our our notepad designs on this one page to save on paper when we're printing. So I'm going to design one and then we'll duplicate it twice. Triplicate it? Anyways, we'll make extras and it'll go on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is create the base for our box. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard to get a rectangle and then I'm going to drag it up. I'm just going to design in the middle of the page and I'll move it over later. Um, and I'm going to make this the size of the notepad that I want to create. When you change the box, in that little black box, it tells you how many inches the design is, or it may show you whatever measurement you created the canvas in. But I want mine to be eight inches long, just based on the packaging I'm going to be using. So eight inches long. And uh, also, my printer doesn't go right to the edge. If you have a printer that does edge-to-edge -edge printing, you could make it bigger, but mine has a very small border where it can't print. And that's pretty normal, so that's going to be the case in most printers. So eight inches tall. And then for widths, I'm just going to go for maybe th either three or three and a half. I think I'm going to do three and a half for this one. And I'm just going to make sure that that fits on the page. Um, yeah, that'll fit. You can put them side by side, like you can even meet them up like that, and there's still be room for printing on the sides. And this is uh, this is a little advantageous because then you'll have to make one cut rather than two in between them. So I'm just going to delete the extra two. So a rectangle, eight inches by three and a half, and you can see that when you go to resize in the corner there. I'm going to be designing on this as my background. So first I'm going to pick the color I want. I might change this later. The next thing I'm going to do is add in the box with the lines for a to-do list, but you may want to think about your whole composition overall. I'm going to use a graphic that I designed that I haven't made a notepad with yet before, and that is this little baking picture I did. I drew this in Procreate, and I have it on a greeting card that says, you bake the world a better place, which is very cute and people like, but I haven't put it on a notepad yet, so I'm going to use this here, and it's just transparent. I didn't have a background on Procreate. But you could also use features in Canva to extract a picture from a different design. So this is a Canva Pro feature, uh, which I do have. So you don't have to have a Pro account to do any of this, but if you wanted to use something that already had a background, 
Like, for example, this is a greeting card I sell, and I think it's very funny. But if you uh, have Canva Pro, you could just go into Edit Image and then Background Remover, and it'll turn this into a graphic you can use for a project like this. So if I wanted to use that, I could shrink it down and put it up here, um, put a more high contrast background, and then put the box below it. So you can kind of use lots of different art pieces for these projects. It doesn't have to be something specifically designed for a notepad, uh, but of course you definitely can do that as well. I'm just going to delete that and put this picture up near the top. And I think I'm going to do a grocery list because that makes sense with these baked items. And I'm going to change the color of the background to match a little bit better. You can pull a color from a picture in Canva. Just click on, I've clicked on the rectangle here. And then I'm going to this add new color and the little dropper tool here. And I'll pick one of this. So that's the color from the picture. And I'm just going to make it lighter. Be right a bit there. Yeah, I think that's cute. Then it kind of matches this little heart by the barcode on the drawing. Now I'm going to add another rectangle with R. This one I'm going to make white because this is where the text is going to go. Adding some white space uh, or a white background to your to-do list lines will save you on printer ink. So if you are doing it at home or ink is a concern for you, add some white space, but I definitely recommend adding a background. I'll talk a little bit more about background logistics momentarily, but first let's do this. So I'm going to make this white box about there. I'm going to add rounded corners just by going up to border style and rounding it maybe 25. I think that's really cute. Okay, now we're going to add the lines. To do this, I'm going to hit L on the keyboard. It gives us a line and I will first make this the right width. So that's probably good. I'll drag it up there and then I'll change the thickness of it to one, line weight one, which is the thinnest. And sometimes I will also change the color just to make it a little less jarring. Uh, the black on the pastel design, not my favorite. So I would maybe do like a dark pink. Okay, there, that's a lot more the same color as the flower bag there. So that's one line. Now I'm gonna add a little checkbox beside it, a little line everything and then start duplicating. I'm going to add another R for rectangle, make this one really small. I'm going to hold down shift on my keyboard and then it's going to keep it as a square. Next, I will add a border weight of one so that it has a line around it. And I'm going to make the inside transparent. I'll zoom in so you can see it closer. So that's this little box we're working with. Now it has a border and no filling. Make it that same, oops. Make the border the same color. And there we go. So I'm just going to put that in line with the line there. And that looks pretty good. Move it over a little. Now I'm gonna hold down shift and select them both so they're moving as one item and center it. And that purple line appears to help you see when it's centered, like that. Now I just need to duplicate this a bunch of times. So I will hold down shift, select them both again, and I'm just going to group them just so they don't separate. Hit the plus. And that I think looks like the right width. And now if I hit, well, I will align it again. I'm gonna hit duplicate a bunch of times and it should automatically line them up once you've moved one. As long as you don't deselect it, it'll let you do this. That bottom one's a little off, so I'm just gonna delete it. And I'm just gonna select all of them and move them down. You can do this by holding shift and clicking on each group or select them all with a box like this. Hold down shift and click on the ones that you don't want to select anymore, like those two boxes. Just a little Canva tip for you. There, okay, now it's all centered. Looks pretty cute. So this design is basically good to go. I think I like it pretty plain as is. However, um, first of all, I didn't add any text. You completely can. Uh, groceries, to-do list, or to buy whatever you want to add to it. I don't personally add any branding to the front of my designs. Like you could put like Lucky Spirit Studio, that's my art studio down here. Um, but I put it on the back of the notepad. Um, that's just my preference. You can add more branding to it if you like. Now I'm just gonna show you a little problem that you may encounter. So I've selected all of it. I'm just gonna group it, keep it together. Add another version of it and one more. So when you wanna fit these on a page, if you want to group them together so the sides are touching, 
that's great. You'll save space and make sure it was a, it won't print on the edges, but it is going to be impossible to figure out where to cut when you have printed this. So you can see the pink backgrounds blend into each other. So option A is just to print them with a tiny bit of space between them, which will probably still print fine. Uh, again, it depends on your particular printer's margins for this, but it means you're doing twice as many cuts because you have to cut each side of this. So that's an option if you want to keep the background plain. If you would like to do a patterned background, then you can group them together, but you just need to have a pattern that is going to not symmetrically meet. So I'll show you an example of this on a different design just to show you what I mean. This is one of my notepad designs, and as you can see here, the designs are touching each other for each page, but because the pattern doesn't line up, you can basically, I can use a ruler when I'm cutting these and make sure that I'm getting very precisely down the line that it's meant to be cut on. You can do this by following the tutorial as I've shown you exactly, and then just adding pattern elements to it, or you could create a design in Procreate, for example, the size of the notepad you wanna make. So uh, ours was eight inches by three and a half inches, and then color in the background, make these cool waves. That's how I did this one. And then just import that background rectangle into Canva, and then add the other elements on top of it. This way will mean you do less cuts overall, um, especially if you're cutting them by hand with an X-Acto knife, which is how I do it. Um, if you're using a big paper cutter machine, um, maybe not as many concerns about wearing out your hand doing that, but um, yeah, these are just some tips. So this is the design I'm gonna go with. I will give it a little bit of space and export it as a PDF. Here is the design in my preview window and I'm gonna print and just show you the print settings that I use. My printer is an Epson EcoTank 2400. I really like it because the ink lasts forever and I think it prints really clear and pretty, but it does not like heavier paper, so I have a hard time with things like cardstock in this particular printer. That's not what we're using today, so that's okay. The only setting I'm going to change, and again, this dialog box may be different on your printer, is print settings. I'm gonna find media types. This is just regular paper, so that's okay. But I'm going to print on quality. So that's gonna make it very crisp. It's gonna take longer to print this. So you may wanna just batch print and go do something else before you start working on cutting and designing. But I, because I make these to sell, I want them to be really crisp. So that's it. And because there's three on a page, I'm gonna be using 28 pound paper. I will show you the exact one I'm using in a video clip in a second. It's a little bit heavier than regular printer paper. And I think it's really nice to write on. People really give me good feedback about it as a product. So with that in mind, I found that creating a notepad that is 30 pages is the right size, it feels like the right weight, um, and the binding also holds up really well for that size. So because we have three on a page, I'm gonna be printing 10 copies. I'm gonna make that happen now, and then we'll finish up this notepad. Here's the paper that I'm printing on for the notepads. It is Xerox Bold Digital paper, um, as you can see here. It's 28 pounds or 105 GSM. Um, if you, or maybe it's just GM, anyways. I am gonna put a link to find this in the video description and also just write the name down there in case you're looking for it. I just got it at Staples. You can get it on Amazon um, and other comparable papers are around too. I have all 10 sheets here printed out and we're going to cut them up and create our notepad. If you haven't seen any other tutorials I've done on notepad creation, let me run you quickly through the products that we're going to use to make this happen. So first I have a cutting mat and also an X-Acto knife. That's what I use to cut these out with a metal ruler. Uh, but you could definitely use scissors or you could use a paper cutter if that's easier for you. That would definitely be faster. I just find that they're not as precise and I like to get these extremely precisely cut. If you got these printed somewhere like Staples or I believe also FedEx, you could get these cut, uh, printed and cut for you, um, but that would be even more expensive. So I'm just gonna cut these like this. After that, we are going to be using some cards or what is this? Chipboard. We're gonna be using chipboard as our backing for this. So this is just a piece I cut. I get these really big sheets of chipboard. They're like four foot by three foot from the art supply store. Um, and this is just a piece I cut and we'll chop it to size as the stiff backing for our notepad. I'm going to be using some binder clips and some scraps of paper to clamp the notepad together while we glue it. I'm gonna be using this Mod Podge as our glue. This is my favorite glue I've used to create notepads. I find it dries 
uh, flexible, but it, it's, it's great for notepads and you can tear off the paper without it ripping. And I will list and link all of these products in the video description below if you wanted to pick them up. And for the finishing touches for this project, I'm going to be adding my brand stamp to the back. This is my little logo and information stamp I got made custom at Staples and an ink pad. And I'm going to be putting magnet on the back of it. So this is just a sheet of magnet I got from the dollar store that I cut up and glue on. You can find this pretty much anywhere. So those are the materials we're going to use. And first I'm going to cut some of these out. This can be a little bit of a time consuming job, but I quite like it and I find it very uh, meditative. Sometimes I'll just put on a podcast or watch a show while I do this. So I don't mind how long it takes. But I'm going to show you just the first one and then I will speed through the rest so you don't have to watch me cut 10 sheets of paper. So I just lined this up and this is where if you had a background with a pattern on it, it becomes a little bit easier to make sure you're not cutting if the designs are close to each other. You see, super precise. Um, that's why I like doing it by hand. Obviously that means it's really slower, which means that you should be charging more for these products than if you were making them really fast. But um, that's just, that's fine for me in my business right now. You can do it whichever method makes sense for you. Also, I recommend that you cut off the four sides first and then do the insides so that you're not cutting each of these small strips um, separately just to save time. There's my first one all cut out and the edges are nice and clean, super straight and um, no tears at the corners as well. So it's going to look really nice when these are all perfectly stacked together to make our notepad. Now let's use editing magic so you don't have to watch me do this 30 times. There we go. Now we have the stack of 30 sheets all cut out and ready to go. And as you can see, if I tidy them up a bit, it is a very clean little cut stack. So it looks quite nice, almost like it was cut in a factory, which is the quality I am aiming for. So the next step is to cut the cardstock or chipboard out to be the size that you need for the backdrop. So usually I just take one of these sheets, put the rest aside, and then I will figure out where I'm going to cut from. So one way you can do this is to take a pencil, trace around it, and then cut that out with scissors. Um, I do that for some of them, but for this one, I want to just try and be quick about it. So I'm just going to go in right with my X-Acto knife and just actually I'm going to grab the ruler as well. And we'll just cut it like this um, because I've done this a few times. The chipboard is pretty thick to cut through, so I do have to go over it a couple times until I hit the cutting mat. And there we go, perfectly cut to size. Now I will just stack them together and make sure everything looks right. This is a good stage to inspect, make sure everything looks the way you want it to because after you clamp it, it's gonna kind of glue the way it is. So next step is to clamp and glue. I'm gonna use two big binder clips as my clamps and I'm gonna use these little bits of paper scrap just to hold them together. So I'm gonna be gluing along this edge here and that means I want this to be super, super flat. So I'm going to tap it a bunch of times in different directions just to try and get the pages to perfectly line up. Most importantly, on that edge that I want to be really flat. While trying not to mess it up too much. And there, that looks pretty good to me. If you can see, it's super level, super flat there. So just pinching it so I don't move it. I'm just gonna use this piece of cardstock here. And I'm putting it slightly below where I'm gluing just so I don't accidentally glue this to the notepad. And I will clamp this on both edges. Okay, so now final inspection, make sure it looks good because we are about to use some glue. Okay, I had to go find a little paintbrush because I forgot to grab one, but this is just um, a really cheap little brush with tight bristles. I don't want a loose one for gluing onto the notepad. You could also use like I don't know, a, a toothpick or something if you didn't want to use something with bristles, but um, I don't recommend using a cotton bud. I think I've seen someone else do that with like a, like a Q-tip or a cotton bud because it leaves little fibers in the uh, glue here. So all I'm gonna do is 
put a thin coat along here. The first coat, I wanna really take my time and make sure I push it into the grooves here. It is like pretty tight, so it's not a hard job to do this. Um, the pages are pretty tight together, but one thin coat, let it dry, and then we'll do a couple extra coats just to thicken it up. And I even pull the glue a little bit down to the back of the chipboard just to give it a little more stability right along that part where I think it pulls on the most. So it's pretty straightforward and that's all you gotta do. Okay, that's my first coat done. I'm just gonna set this down. The binder clips keep it from touching the surface, so you can kinda of just rest it like that. And once it's dry, which only takes about 10 minutes maybe, then I will do another coat. I'll probably do three coats total, but you can sometimes get away with two if the second coat is a thick one. So I will wait and come back and do that. Now the last layer of glue is all dry. I'm gonna take off the clamps to see our finished product. So here's the notepad, nice and secure, and you can always do a page flip test like this to make sure that none of the pages come loose. So there we go, they're all secure. So to finish up this notepad, what I do that's special for this shape is I add in some magnet strips and I just cut these off of that bigger sheet um, that I got from the dollar store. So I'll just flip it over. Now these are peel and stick. You could definitely add additional glue if you had concerns about yours not sticking very well. So far, I haven't had any issues with just using the glue that comes on the back of these. So I will peel off the backing and put one at the very bottom. And the other one I just put up at the top. There we go. So that looks good. Next, I will finish off by adding my stamp for my art studio, which like I said, I just got made at Staples. There we go, I put that near the bottom usually. If I don't use magnets, then I just put it right at the very bottom of here. And that's the only branding I put on my notepads. I don't really want anything to obscure the design on the front. So that's it. The last thing I do before I sell them because I sell at in-person markets and that can be kind of hard on these. I don't want them to get banged up before they go to customers is I put them in a little um, clear sleeve. I will link these exact ones down below. Um, but it is a little bit wider than this. So you could definitely make wider notepads if you like, but I didn't find any that were precisely the uh, width I wanted, but it is the right height. So um, I will just pop this inside. And you could either put it in the middle and seal it or tuck it to one side and then fold this over, which is what I'll do here. So first I will do the top strip. I'm just gonna use a little piece of tape for this, but you could use a branded sticker for sure. I'll just pop one right there and one down there. I haven't seen anybody have any problem with me doing that packaging style because then from the front, it looks so nice. I price all my products individually, so I put a little price tag sticker there and that's it. That's how I've made all my notepads and I'll just show you a couple of the others up close. Uh, I did that one with the clock tower. It's a little bit of a wider one. I did the puppy dog one. These ones have my illustration of Peggy's Cove, which is a lighthouse that's very popular here. And I did this cute um, puppy one as well, which printed in two different color tones. I believe one of these was CMYK and one was RGB from Canva. And I've read recently that Canva doesn't convert to CMYK very well. So you may actually wanna print in RGB and have your printer do the conversion for you. That's just a tip I heard recently. Anyways, like you can see, I sell these for $10 right now. That's $10 Canadian. Um, that's a price that works for me currently, but I think uh, pricing depends on a lot of variables, including where you are, what currency you're using and um, things like that. So don't take my price as, as gospel on this one. That's just what I've been doing. So I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope that you are inspired to create to-do lists, whether for your business or just for fun at home for you to use. And if you enjoyed this video, please let me know. I'd love any feedback or other tutorials you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. And subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more content because I love sharing stuff about my market business and my art business in general. All right, thanks again. Hope you have a really great day. See ya.